Hey, it's Joel. I'm, you caught me just in the nick of time. What I'm doing right now is using the Palette Plus, not the new one, not the Palette 2, the Palette Plus to make custom filament. And I posted about this on Twitter the other day. People seemed to think it was a really cool idea. So I thought I would explain it a little bit further. Right now, what I do is I have it produce filament out the end, and then every so often I come and check on it and wind it up on this roll. It's not the best solution. And yes, some sort of filament auto winder would be a better solution. But in the very short amount of time that I've had to get this going, I think winding it myself is an okay solution. I just have to check on it every so often. And since I'm in the studio anyway, prepping prints and prepping for next videos, gotta twist it this way. There we go. The idea is it can produce filament and then when I check on it, I just roll it up onto this, this roll. And you can see I got quite a bit on here right now. Well, here, I'm at a good spot. Let me give you a tour. First, we start with the filament rolls and I've got four random filaments here. The idea is I just wanna kinda get some cool colors to mix together. The Palette Plus ships in this box. They include these little 3D printed clips and there's a bar that goes down the middle so it can hold all four of the filaments that you wanna use. The filaments have to be 1.75 millimeters and I'm using all of the same. In this case, it's all PLA. Oh, you can see this green one is getting close. So I'll show you how to pull that in just a sec, but, but let's, let's finish. So come on up here. The filament all goes in right here. So one, two, three, four inputs, and there are drive motors behind this, this wall right here. And here's the power plug. This doesn't have a power switch. Pallet two has a power switch. So yay, pallet two. To get inside, there's four screws, one here, one here, one here, one here. I've already taken them off. They're right there. The SD card is in. So let's, let's kind of take this metal off and see if we can't bend it around that SD card. There we go. There's the insides. Here are the motors that are drawing the filament and they go through PTFE tubes that are underneath the display. In here, the filament comes into this tube. This is a little heater. Be careful, it's hot on an arm and that arm brings the heater to the tube, heats up the filament and using this motor back here, and the motor's up there, it squishes the filament together when it's warm, and then it slowly extrudes it out over these rollers, through this tube, and out the output motor. I'll hang out right here and we'll see if we can catch this arm working on the next, next splice. There we go, there's the cutter. Now that arm will go over, it'll heat the tube. Now the motor up front is pushing the filament a little bit to put some pressure. And now both motors are working in conjunction to move the melted splice out of the tube. And then back to normal production. Here, let's take a look at the output. You can see that the filament comes out the single tube. When you're using a 3D printer, there's a little magnet that butts up against this wall and tells it whether or not it needs to produce filament or whether it can coast and use some of the slack. But right now, I am not using it with a printer, so it just comes out this tube. What's interesting, the filament itself has some memory as to how tightly it is wound around the roll, and depending on how old that filament is, then it's gonna come into play, and you can see it has all these these bends and twists in it, and that's because it remembers being on the filament spool. And there we go, there's a spliced end right there that's blue to white. That looks really good, and you can tell that it really squished it together, and then it, it cooled down and so it was able to solidify. You can see that not all splices are perfect. You can tell that the green pulled away before it was cooled enough, and so we're left with this little string. It's still tight enough to hold together, but you wouldn't want to flex it too much at that point. And that's why I'm trying to wind this filament as it goes. One of the things that can really cause a headache is when filament is bound and knotted on the roll, which you can kind of see right here. So unfortunately, this roll has some filament that's crossed over itself. And so you don't, <laughs> you, if the pallet uh, grabs it and starts bringing it up, it's gonna, it's gonna cause some destruction. So what I have to do is just kind of try and free it myself. Uh, 
Also remember, this is old scraps of filaments, barely you or rolls with barely any filament left on them. And if a filament roll is giving you too much trouble and it's gonna compromise the integrity of the entire length, then sometimes you just wanna cut it. So this was getting kind of long, so I'm just kind of giving it a wind. Again, an automated solution. Sure would be nice, but that's gonna take time. And I don't have the time right now. And I'm, I'm getting a decent spool going. Let's just say that the white filament itself is not doing well. Let me show you how to change it out. I'm gonna replace that white spool with this spool of black PLA. I believe it's a color fab. On the screen, I need to go to change filament and then I select the drive. This is drive four. Whenever you change filament on the Palette Plus, it does a cut procedure. It just cuts some filament. And so I'm gonna wait for it to back it out just a little bit so that there's not a cut and then a cut right away because that, again, can compromise the integrity of the entire line of filament and we don't want that. Looks like it shows blue and I can see blue out so I've got drive four selected. It's doing the cut. It's gonna back out the white. It's gonna expect more filament so I'm gonna give it the black and I set it down. So here's how we get rid of the white from here. Oh. that when you change out that filament the screen asks do you want to change any more i'm just going to hit no and then it'll continue now we're going to heat the arm and it's going to rejoin the filament and then we will be extruding more so it's not just hardware there's software at play here and i thought i would show you that this is chroma and within chroma this is where you can define which of the colors go to which parts of a model and it generates the purge block and it does all that cool stuff but chroma their downloadable application also does this generate custom msf msf stands for i don't know but it's their custom format so you've got random end of spool pattern and gradient i'm doing a random and select a profile you just have to pick a printer that you've already configured i have my gmax 1.5 xt plus easy enough but that's not really going to come into play because we're not going to use it with a printer which drives to use i have all four checked you can either do exact splices or you can do random in a range so what i did on the one that's running out there i said the minimum splice length is 100 millimeters with the maximum being 1000 millimeters total length in millimeters that you want to extrude. My goal was to go 100 meters of filament because a full one kilogram roll as a 2.2 pounds is usually it's over 300 meters, right? 300 meters. So 100 or uh, 100 meters, which would be 100,000 millimeters, that's going to be essentially a third of a roll. So 100,000. And then you hit save and it saves it out the MSF, which you then copy to the SD card, and then you bring it to the pallet. So you can see I've made quite a bit of filament here. I've got, got it bagged. I've got this one bagged. I have some spools that had some lines in them. That's pretty cool. I know not everybody has a pallet plus, but it was interesting enough for me. I did send the tweet out and I had enough people that thought it was a good idea. And so I'm just giving you a video demonstration here. Also look at the models it produces. This was printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III and it came out great. Here, let's go take it in a better light. This is a fun model. I found it on Thingiverse and it's just a demonstration of how cool the color mixes can be. I mean, you look at it, it's got the grays, it's got the reds, it's got the greens, it's got the yellows. It's got oranges, I guess. It looks really, really good. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. I'm really happy with this whole project. That's just a quick little demonstration of what I got going on here during the day. I mean, I'm doing cool stuff every day. I just figured I'd run the camera and show you. If you like this, let me know and I can try to give you more glimpses into my everyday dealings here in the studio. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.